In order to determine the net charge on this ball, it's going to be helpful to draw a free body diagram showing the forces that are acting on the ball. We went ahead and superimposed a y and x axis centered right on the ball. Now there are three forces acting on the ball. We have the downward gravitational force, which we can mark as mg. We have the rope pulling up on the ball through a tension force, so we're going to label that tension force T. And then there is an electric force. Now it may be challenging to figure out which direction the electric force would be pointing. We know that this ball has a certain amount of charge and it's placed into an electric field. Now if the ball were positively charged, then the electric force would point with the field. But if the ball were negatively charged, then it would have an electric force pointing to the left. Now which one is correct can be deduced by studying the tension force very carefully. We can see that the tension force would have an upward y component that we might for now call ty, and then it would have a leftward x component that we could call tx. Now, the key is to notice that the leftward component of the tension must be balanced by some other rightward force. And as of now, there is no other rightward force drawn on the diagram. So that gives us the clue that the rightward force must be the electric force. That means it points to the right. And therefore, we can deduce that the charge is positive. Because positive charges have forces on them, electric forces, that point in the same direction as the electric field. So we know the ball has a positive charge, and of course we need to figure out how much charge that is. Let's take another look at the free body diagram. So we've redrawn it over here, and this time we've marked the angle theta between the tension force and the y-axis. It is important to understand how we know that that angle is indeed theta. We can actually, whoops, come back to the diagram that we had drawn previously. It's a little tricky to see because it's cluttered, but if we draw this dotted line in a solid color and then the y-axis in a solid color. We can see that those two lines are parallel to one another and then they are joined by this line right here. We recall from geometry that if you have two parallel lines that are joined by a third line then these alternate interior angles are the same. So if this angle is marked theta then this one between tension and the y-axis would also be theta. So that explains where that theta is coming from. Now, we remember that this ball is in equilibrium, so let's try to understand what that would mean. It basically means that the sum of the forces in the y-direction will equal zero, and the sum of the forces in the x-direction will also equal zero. So let's take a look at the forces that are acting in the y direction. We can see that there are two of them. There is the y component of the tension, which points straight up, and then there is the y component of the gravitational force, which points down. So we can write that Ty minus mg would equal zero. Notice it's minus mg because mg points downward, and we typically assign that the negative direction. In the x direction, we're going to have a couple of forces as well. We have the electric force pointing to the right, and then we have the x component of tension pointing to the left. So for that, we can write that the electric force Fe minus t the x component of tension will equal zero. Now, at this point, we're going to want to come up with a better expression for these components Ty and Tx. We can see from this triangle that we may color in yellow here that the y component is adjacent to the angle. And because it's adjacent, we would use the cosine function to represent it. So in other words, we can say that Ty equals the tension times the cosine of the angle. And then the x component is opposite of that angle. And therefore, we would use the sine to represent it. So we would have tension times the sine of the angle. So let's come down below and replace Ty with T cosine theta, and let's replace Tx with T sine of theta. So far, so good. What we'll do next is take the equation we have in the y direction. We're going to go ahead and add mg to the other side. This way, we can see that T cosine of theta 
is equal to mg. And then if we divide both sides of this equation by cos theta, what we'll end up doing is isolating an expression for tension. We will see in a moment why this is advantageous to us. So we have mg over cos theta is equal to the tension. The reason that that's nice is we can take this expression for the tension and we can plug it into our other equation that we had generated. So we would have Fe minus, let's be very careful here, so we're saying the tension is mg over cosine theta, and then that's multiplied by the sine of theta, and this is set equal to zero still. Now we can look carefully and we're going to go ahead and multiply the numerators here. If you'd like you can put the sine of theta over one. So now you would have the Fe minus mg sine theta over cosine theta is equal to zero. We of course know that sine theta over cos theta is equal to tangent of theta. So we can simplify this further by just doing Fe minus mg tangent of theta equals zero. We are getting there, but we still don't have the charge incorporated into this equation. Now we do know that the electric force acting on a charged particle is equal to the charge times the electric field. So what we'll do is replace this Fe with Qe, and that conveniently gets the charge incorporated into our equation. So now we're really getting close here. We want to solve for the charge. Why don't we add mg tan theta to both sides of this equation. These will cancel out. So now we have QE equals mg tan theta. And finally, to get the charge Q, we will divide both sides of this by the electric field. So at this point, it will be a matter of plugging in the known values, the mass, gravitational constant, the angle, and the electric field. We should have all those. Let's make sure we do. The mass was 2 grams. Now that's not the proper unit, so you're going to need to write that as 2 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. And then we have the length of the string, and the angle is 15 degrees. I'm not sure we need the length of the string, so we'll just plug the mass, the angle, and the gravitational constant in there. Oh, we need the electric field, of course. And the electric field was given in the question as 1 times 10 to the third. I almost missed it there. So we do have everything we need. Let's go ahead and plug in. And when we process this on our calculator, make sure you're in degree mode on your calculator. You're going to get 5.25 times 10 to the minus 6. This will come out in coulombs. That's the standard unit of charge. If you need to express this in microcoulombs, you might remember that 1 micro coulomb is 10 to the minus 6th coulombs. So what happens is the 10 to the minus 6th coulombs would cancel out and then you would multiply 5.25 by 1 and then you end up with 5.25 micro coulombs. So you can express your answer in that manner or you can express it back in 5.25 times 10 to the minus 6th coulombs.